My session is the power and benefits of a preaching series. The power and benefits of a preaching series. You know, I just started doing this about four years ago, and I did it specifically because I was away so much. You know, with being on the road, I'd only be there sometimes one Sunday a month, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe I'd be away for two months, you know, and, uh, and then I had to have somebody else preach when I'm away. You know, now... What I did, I came up with themes, and one of the benefits, I'm talking about the benefits of preaching a series. And I put here, if you plan in advance, three, six to 12 months in advance, it's great if you can plan 12 months in advance. Plan out your monthly uh, monthly themes for each and every month. And by planning in advance, you can see if you're actually preaching the full counsel of God. You know, sometimes we become like a one-string fiddle, you know, and we're playing the same tune all the time. We're preaching our favorite subjects all the time, and we never touch on the things that need to be touched on. If you plan it for a year in advance, then you can make sure, you can evaluate what you've been preaching, and you, uh, you can see if you've really been preaching the full counsel. If the stuff you missed, then you make sure you put it in the next year, and the next year, so you are going to get through the full counsel of God and you're taking your people somewhere you got to know where you're taking them and you have to take them somewhere on purpose and so preaching the full counsel of God and you can plan prepare and promote in advance it's great to promote things in advance if you don't know what you're going to be preaching on you go you don't know what to advertise not only that but your people don't know what to bring people to I tell you, there's certain themes that you mention, and it just kind of rings true with your friends. They want to know about that. They want to know about the end times and what's happening. They want to know about family and where it's going. They want to know about some of the government things that are happening. And the Bible has the solution and the answer for everything. So we need to, we need to preach relevant subjects Ask, answer the questions that people are asking. Choose the themes that are really going to give us the opportunity to be able to present the truth within them. Good to see you, Pastor Albert. Hey. <laughs> Just got here from the floods and the storms. Amen. And so uh, where are you taking the people? From salvation to spiritual maturity to significant ministry. They come in, they get saved, but I tell you what, then we want to get them mature and then we want to find out who they are, where they fit and begin to release them into that. Do they know and understand the vision and the 10 tenets of victory? Do they have that in their heart? Do they know it? You know, if they don't know it, then it's going to be difficult for them to tie into what we're all doing and where we're going. And so... There are one or two years of theme screens uh, of mine on the resource page of Victory TV. Is that what they are, Doug? The, the resource page on Victory TV, and it can be downloaded and used free of charge. Now, Doug, do we have some of those? Can we flip up a few of those so we can have a look at them? So here you have downward roots and upward fruit. And see, this is a great theme. You know, it really is. That's from Ezekiel, it was Isaiah 37, 31. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bring and bear fruit upward. Man, I tell you, this is a powerful theme. So many people have been uprooted these days. From one community to another, from one church to another, it's hard to replant a tree, isn't it? When a tree's been uprooted, then it's very difficult to get it put down again. And so I tell you, there's a lot of people been through church splits, got uprooted, families uprooted. We have to learn how to get them re-rooted so they can put roots downward. Then they'll bring forth fruit upward. No root downward, no fruit upward. And so this is a vital lesson. That's one. And then here, this is a, some of the themes for a month are already chosen for us, aren't they? just by certain things that happen through the year. Like you've got uh, Easter. Easter. This is one we use for Easter very often, and there's a whole variety of others, but one man, one cross, and a world that was changed forever. See, just a, a great theme. You can preach the whole m- month on that. This one man, one cross, and a world that was changed forever. It's great when you have a theme like that. Look at this one here, Faith Walk. Walk by faith and not by sight, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Here's another one. How to be stable in unstable times. And this is from uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, uh, 32. 
It says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. I tell you, there are times this times when all hell breaks loose against us, don't we? Isn't there? I tell you, this is where we need to be like the children of Issachar, and we have we're in touch with God, and He shows us the appropriate action to get through it. Wisdom from above. Happy is the man that finds wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. These are great themes. Look at this one here. Born free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And of course, that's a great theme for July in the United States. Independence Day. Freedom. Born free. Live free. Stay free. Spiritual awakening. Knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. And then it says, so rise up, put on the armor of God. And this is a powerful theme. Time to awake and rise up. While we slept, what happened? What does it say in, the, in, the, in Matthew 13? While we slept, the enemy sowed tears. And look at the tears that have been sown in Canada. Over these last 20 years. In the church. Where churches are no longer believing. You know in the, in the, in the principles set down in the word of God. I mean look at the things they do. And you think are they Christians at all? They're going to church. They listen to messages. You know. And yet their actions. By their actions. They violate all of the spiritual principles. Wow. How can they sit in church. And believe what the Bible says when they're acting totally opposite to it. Look at this. Winning in the war zone. For we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And spiritual wickedness in where? High places. Heavenly places. Man, this is where the battle is in the heavenly places. So we are wrestling. It's not a physical warfare. This is a spiritual warfare. And we have to know how to battle in the spirit realm. These are great themes. Turn your thanksgiving into thanks living. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? You. you. Concerning you to be thankful in everything. For, not in everything, but for everything. In everything. So I tell you, the quicker you get thankful, you find something to be thankful for in it, the quicker you'll get out of it. Amen. I always remember reading about Matthew Henry. You know, the man that wrote the Matthew Henry, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, commentary. He says, he says in his diary, he says, one day I was robbed. Today I was robbed. He says, uh, he says, and I thank God that even though they took my all, it wasn't much. And then he says, and I thank you that all they took was my money and not my life. And then he, at the end he says, and I thank you, Lord, that I was the one robbed and not the one doing the robbing. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful where you can see something, even in something horrible, you can see something good and you can give thanks for it. And the quicker you give thanks for it, it's God's will, isn't it? Yeah. You want to be in God's will? Yeah. This is the will of God concerning you and you and you and you and you and all of us in this place. Yeah. And you know, and it's... I tell you, that was one thing that impressed me in Africa the first time I went, was their thankfulness. You know, we'd be in the bush there preaching, and people had nothing in some of those places. And I remember Hazel asking, what are you thankful for? One man stood up, he got one clapper in his tambourine, I'm thankful for my, the clapper I've got in my tangerine. And then one stood up, he got one tooth in his mouth, I'm thankful for my tooth. I got one chicken, I own a chicken, one chicken. And, you know, everybody had rejoiced, you know. You know, and, I, and you wonder why, they get, why there's a lot of healings take place, physical healings. That's a lot of it because people were thankful. I stopped, I stopped saying, let's praise God in the, middle of a, in the middle of a service. You know why? Because the praise and the thanksgiving went on for half an hour. <laughs> yeah. I said, let's, pray, let's stand and praise God. And then I thought, it just takes off. They got nothing. Physically, and yet everything took off, and the place is filled with praise. I had to sit down and wait for it to finish, and then you forgot where you got to <laughs> in your message. You tell you, it's really, really tough. But I tell you what, this is there's so many themes. What we've got, Doug will tell you where you can find them. Is that another one? Oh, yeah, look at that. This is this. I love this. It's a modern day kind of a one. Uh, uh, a child was born, a son was given. 
For unto us a child was born, unto us a son was given. And we've got a, a lot of these different kinds of, um, of uh, I think it's about three years that we have of theme screens that you can tap into. And I tell you what, it's great when you can keep that before the people. And then we have side screens as well. We have, these screens are usually the big one in the middle. And then we have side screens where you can put the words on and they also have uh, certain pictures on there as well that are very, you know, just subliminal, but they're there. You know, and it's great because what you're doing, you're reinforcing a theme. And not only that, but you know what happens with this? If you plan in advance and you've got this for the next, you, the, your, your staff know what you're going to be preaching for the next year or 12 months, you know, then they can actually begin to plan. Okay, okay you're preaching next month. You're preaching the month after. You're preaching the month after. And now they have a whole month or two months to plan and prepare a message. Rather than you saying, well, can you preach for me this week? And it's Saturday night. Yeah. And you expect, expect your, you know, a, a Friday night. No, it's nice if, you, if your staff have, a, a, you know, some time to be able to prepare for what it is they're going to preach. So you preach a good message, you know. And it's great for me and, or you if you travel a lot like Hazel and I have. We're away. We can come back a month later and we know what the theme is, you know. And they know where they're going and they take it somewhere. Have you got that last slide that we had there, Doug? You know, the last one with the, the 10 tenants on it? 10 tenants of victory. In California, they preached on all of those. I had my staff preach on all of that. You know, I, the 10 tenants of victory. The victory vision, reach, teach, mobilize. And then the 10 tenants. They loved it. Took one tenant each week. One tenant. And they preached on it. There's some powerful statements. Look at them. It says, we are committed to increase as opposed to maintenance. I mean, that's been one of the main themes in this place, hasn't it? We're committed to increase. We talked about increase and God being a God of increase. And God has increase on his mind, so should we have increase on our mind. And then the, over here, it says, uh, uh, teamwork and agreements, the place of power. Matthew 18, you to agree on earth. And of course, there's some of these little statements that are, that are in our ten tenets. You can preach on them. You could preach a whole month on one of them. You could preach two weeks on one of them. And it gets into the heart of the people. It really does. And so these are good. And, you, and Doug's coming up next after me. And he'll tell you exactly how you can find them, where you can get them. It says in Proverbs 24 and verse 27, it's prepare your work outside, make it fit for yourself in the field, and afterwards build your house. Preparation. You talk about preparation. If you prepare your message, or prepare what you're going to preach in advance, you can always change it. Let's say you know the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart about something. You can always, you're the pastor, you can get up there and you can preach something else. All right? And you know, and if it's your associate and he's saying, well, I really feel this. I say, well, hey, you feel that's what's God laying on your heart? That's pretty good. Go for it. But you know, if you've got a theme, the thing is you communicate with your musicians so they've got songs that are in line with your theme. You can communicate with your children's ministry so they are working in tune with the theme. Even your intercessors, they're praying in line with the theme for those things to become a reality in your church. And so you can get all of your different areas of ministry all on board with the same theme for one month. And I tell you, if you've got different preachers preaching, they all come at it from a different angle. I've been amazed at some of these themes. I come up with it one way, and then the associates come up with it a whole variety of other ways. And it really, we all learn. If you focus on one subject for a month, one theme, and you've got a couple of different preachers doing it, the stuff that comes out is amazing. It really is. You think, man, I never thought of that. Never thought of that. That's good. I like that. You know, and so um, I put here, if you plan your themes three to six months in advance, it helps your preaching and teaching associates to plan and prepare in advance. Let them know in advance when they will be preaching and help them prepare if need be. You know, and very often I'll give some of these guys some of my old messages. I'll say, look, read this, see what we can get from it. Sometimes they'll take the outline and preach a, preach a great message, better than I preached. You know, just with an outline. Sometimes that's all people need, just an outline. You know, really do. <clears throat> and so, I put down here, share your team for songs, video, drama, graphics, and key scriptures for the month. One theme a month. Don't run them too long. You know, I've seen some people preach on one subject and they go for 
one month, two months, three months. You're thinking, oh my God, are they ever going to change? <laughs> you know? <laughs> one of the things about changing it every month, and you've got a, a new theme coming up, people say, wow, you can, you can discuss, they can discuss in the small groups, you know, what they learned that week. And then they can also discuss where we're going next month. So you've got everybody excited about next month's ministry and what we're going to hear next month and what's going to come across. And, and, and people invite friends. You know, they, they're not going to invite friends if they don't know what's going to happen in your church. They want something that's relevant, something that's going to answer some questions they're asking. They've got problems in their family. They need, some, they need something to answer those problems. You know, and it's good to, if you preach on family, I know when I first came to Calgary, you know, I, I could see all the problems with families. But I couldn't preach on family just by itself because there were too many singles, you know, divorced, hurting people, and I'd be excluding a whole variety of the people. So we always mix it together, the spiritual and the natural family. The spiritual and the natural family is one of our themes. Spiritual and natural natural family. And it's the same principles pretty much for everyone. The principles you use for building the church are principles you can use for building a good marriage and a great family. Aren't they? Because the church is a family. And so, you know, for themes for themes for special days and months through the year are already set for you. You got Christmas, you got New Year, New Year. You know, New Year, I mean, that's I, what I preach. You know, I've got one theme there, great start for a great year. That was one of the themes here in Calgary one time. And that year, Hazel went into hospital on New Year's Day. And I was preaching the next day in the, in the Northwest Church when we started it. And so I changed, and I was preaching on a great start to a great year. And then my wife has just, just discovered she got cancer. That was in 1990. So I changed the title, and, it, and I preached, it's not how you start that counts, it's how you finish. <laughs> and of course, we finished the year with revival, and my wife got healed, praise God. <laughs> I call her diehard number three. And, uh, she is so resilient. She really is. She's amazing. And your cancer couldn't kill her. You know, the crashes in, in, Can in uh, Kenya couldn't kill her. Crushed vertebrae couldn't stop her. A very severe, complicated malaria couldn't put her out of the race. Nothing can knock her out. She just keeps springing back. You know, you're knocking her. Poof, she's back again. Where'd she come from? Man, I thought she'd had it. No, she's back. Look. <laughs> she's stronger than she ever was. Huh? Wow. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> so themes that are vital, Easter, Pentecost, Thanksgiving for thanks living, all of these. And um, I think it's always great. And, and, and really, I put down here that preaching is really truth on fire. But that's what it is. Preaching is truth on fire. Wow. You know, walking with the disciples, they felt opening the scriptures. They said, didn't our hearts burn within us? As they open the scriptures, that's what we want our congregations to have. Didn't our hearts burn with fire? Could you feel the fire burning within us just as they opened the scriptures? You know, and they began to read it together and they saw it. Wow, something powerful there. I tell, you, I tell you, that's the way it needs to be with our preaching. We get it in our hearts. It burns with fire on the inside. Preaching is truth on fire. You know, a little outline for preaching. Number one. You, you study yourself full. Number two, you pray yourself hot. Number three, you think yourself clear. And then number four, you let yourself go. Huh? Study yourself full. Study that subject, everything you can learn about that subject. And then when you get the subject, then you pray yourself, you pray about it, you pray yourself hot. And you pray about it and God gives you more revelation. You know, and then you've got to think yourself clear. This is the hardest one. The hardest one is to think yourself clear. You've done 20 hours of study. You've got 50 sermons. <laughs> or one sermon for four hours. 
Now you've got to cut it back. It's like the movies they make, you know. I mean, one or two hour movie, the films they take, you know, hours and hours. And they say one of the hardest things is cutting portions out. No, not that scene. You can't cut that scene out. You can't miss that. And, of course, this is the struggle you go through. How are you going to cut it down so you have a 35, 40-minute message, whatever it is you preach in your service? You've got to cut it down so you can get it down to a reasonable point so you're not going to lose people. You're going to keep them there right till the end of the service. And I've finished. Glory to God.